What's up guys? So a lot of you guys have been asking me for single spirits videos. Particularly, you've been asking me for another workhorse spirits video and you've been asking me for a, a what is Amaro video. And I thought that it would be a really good idea to just kind of go spirit category by spirit category and sort of just do like a like what is episode. So today I wanted to start with what is bourbon or like everything that I know about bourbon in a video. And I'm doing bourbon first as opposed to Amaro because even though I know a bunch about Amaro, I know more about bourbon. And I didn't want to do a whole retrospective on whiskey because uh, there's too many categories and it would be a, an hour long video. I thought that I would just go category by category within the whiskey canopy. Uh, bourbon has been my first love when I got into this business. The knowledge that I sought most, you know, when I was first starting and I thought it would be a good place to start. I know that this is a cocktail focused channel, but in being cocktail focused, I think it's really important for us to be able to really understand the spirits that we work with. The more understanding you have of those spirits, the easier it's going to be for you guys to create your own drinks and really understand when you need to sub something for something else, you kind of know how more about how to do that. So this is kind of the first step in that direction. That said, this is not gonna be an everything about bourbon video. I don't know enough to make it an everything about bourbon video. I'm not an expert, uh, but I've been in this business for a really long time and uh, I have amassed a bunch of knowledge about it. And so I just wanna pass that knowledge on to you. So if I get something wrong, please be gentle. Uh, I'm gonna break this video down into three different sections. The first section is just gonna be kind of the history of bourbon, like kind of how it emerged and where it came from. Then the second section is gonna be uh, what is bourbon? Basically all of the little technical requirements that either make bourbon bourbon or make straight bourbon straight bourbon. And then the third one is gonna be how bourbon is made. So what is the process of making the spirit? And then hopefully you'll have a little bit more of an understanding uh, about uh, what it is how and how it's made and how to use it. All right, I'm gonna take a sip of this here bourbon that I have in front of me and we're gonna get into it. So really understand where bourbon came from, you sort of have to understand how distilling got started in this country. Now, the first thing that we were distilling was actually brandy made from apples, but I'm not gonna get into that. That's for another video on another day. I'm gonna just stick with the whiskey. So in about 1640, the first settlers started distilling rye whiskey because rye was a crop that was easy to grow in the weather in the first 13 colonies. The first settlers were largely farmers from Europe who had already had a distilling tradition. So what farmers do with excess grain is they distill it. Any grain that's not good enough to be made into something else gets put into the still. And so every single farm had a still going and they were making all of their own whiskey. So the whiskey that would evolve into what became bourbon didn't actually get its start till 1780s. So basically at this time, settlers were moving south across the Appalachian Trail to the frontier, which is what we now call Kentucky. And what they realized there was that the weather was favorable to growing corn and so they started distilling a corn whiskey because that was the grain that they had plentiful. So fast forward to 1791 and our young country is in a lot of war debt. And George Washington and John Adams thought that it would be prudent to tax whiskey um, to pay back that debt. There were a lot of small time distillers that were really unhappy with the one cent per gallon tax that the government was putting on them because they thought it would run them out of business and so they rebelled. The rebellion lasted from 1791 to 1794, and it culminated with George Washington sending 13,000 troops to quell the rebellion. But part of the deal that the government made with these small time distillers to end the insurrection was to offer them lands in this new frontier of Kentucky. And so since they had this land, they all started going down there and finding that corn and distilling that corn whiskey. I'm not really sure how bourbon got its name, and there are a lot of theories kind of surrounding this issue, but the story that I like the best is that the people in Louisiana started seeing the this corn whiskey that was coming down the Mississippi River from Bourbon County, Kentucky was far superior to what their neighbors were distilling, and so they started calling for that whiskey or that corn whiskey that's coming down from Bourbon County, and so over time it just morphed into bourbon.
So the question on all of your lips is what is bourbon? Uh, so bourbon, in short, is a specialized form of corn whiskey, uh, but it has some rules surrounding it. The mash bill, which is the grains that make up the profile of the whiskey, have to be at least 51% corn, and they have to be aged in a new oak cask that's freshly charred. It has to come off the still at no more than 160 proof, and it can't go into a barrel at any more than 125 proof, and it cannot go into a bottle at any lower than 80 proof. There's two different sections in bourbon. There's bourbon, and then there's straight bourbon, and it all has to do with aging requirement. So bourbon doesn't have any aged requirements. So that means that products that are out there in the world that have been aged for as little as three months or two months can be called bourbon legally. But to call something straight bourbon, it has to be aged for at least two years. The other thing is that as far as age requirements go is that anything that is aged for four years or less has to have an age statement somewhere on the bottle, but anything above that doesn't require an age statement. You will find that age statements are on bottles that boast 10 years or more a lot of the time. Uh, there are those people that think that something that's been in the barrel for over 10 years is only gonna taste of oak and all of the nuances of flavor are gonna be gone. I'm not gonna get into that whole thing, just, uh, just so that you know that when you're looking at a bottle of bourbon, which I have some uh, bonded granddad here, if you do not see an age statement, then you know that whatever is in the bottle is four years and over. And as we well know, most whiskeys are blends of different ages and an age statement will be the age of the youngest whiskey in the bottle. So now this brings us into how bourbon is made. The very first thing you're gonna do when you make bourbon is you're gonna take your selection of grains, which is called your mash bill, and you're going to mill them and uh, cook them to release the starches in the grain. Then those grains are added into what's called a mash tun, where hot water is added and yeast is added and left to ferment. The fermentation takes about three days, and then you have a beer brew that's about eight to nine and a half percent alcohol. Once that beer brew is finished, it's fed into a column still, which is m mostly what people uh, used to create bourbon. There are some pot stilled bourbons, another time, another place. What we're talking about is column stilled bourbon. So the pot beer wash goes into the top of the column into what's called the analyzing column. And uh, it is condensed into alcohol vapor. Basically it is heated up to 170 degrees, which is the boiling point of alcohol and turned into vapor and then redistilled for a second distillation. The distillate that comes out of that goes into what's called a spirits safe. And in that process, the head distiller will then start tasting through the distillate. Uh, they will make what's called heads and tails cut because what they're after is what's called the heart. So that when the first distillate starts coming into the spirit safe, uh, there are some compounds that are toxic and compounds that don't taste very good. Those are called the heads. So the distiller will be tasting through to make sure that the distillate that's coming out is the ethanol that you wanna keep, which is called the heart. The thing is, is that all good things eventually come to an end. And again, the distillate will start turning bitter and start being unpleasant in flavor. And that is called the tails. And uh, basically they will make those cuts and they will take the heart. And that is what is gonna become the finished product. They will put the heart of the distillate into a barrel for aging. And then two years later or more, you have your straight bourbon. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode and learned a little bit about the history of bourbon, how it was made and what it is. And now you can go and enjoy the spirit that by an act of Congress was declared America's native spirit in 1964. I've got a video on my five favorite bourbons that won't break the bank. A lot of people have been asking me about bottles that I buy, how I make my decisions and why. So I decided that I would do a roundup of my five bottles that I always have in my stash at all times. Uh, these are very, very moderately priced bourbons that are easy to replace and are very, very good quality for their price. I will give you a little bit on the mash bill, whatever pertinent information on the bottle I can find, and some tasting notes. So I'll see you guys over there.